guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu. I'm here with Alex, and I wanted to do a video today about um, rear takedowns. If you're fortunate enough to get around behind the person, you get like a good uh, waist, like a good body lock from the, from the back. There's lots of good ways that you can take the person down. Um, there's some that are maybe more higher percentage, uh, higher percentage in certain situations than others. Some that'll be better for different contexts, for gi, for no gi, for sport, for MMA, for whatever is the situation. These are just some of my favorite ones that I like a lot and that I find to be high percentage personally. So um, we're gonna start with one that is, is kind of a basic that you would learn um, in a lot of different situations. And the way I'm gonna first, whenever we get to the rear clinch, however we got here, maybe I slipped a punch, maybe I ducked under, whatever it is, and I get here, I'm gonna go for either a gable grip or an S grip. Typically, depending on the takedown, I usually prefer an S grip with my hands. I like my ear to be in the middle of his back um, so that if this is more of an MMA or a fight context, he can't elbow me in the face so much. It's gonna be more his tricep if anything does touch me. My feet, in relation to his, he's gonna have his feet posted like this here. I'm gonna have one foot close, one foot behind, so this makes kind of a tripod position here. Whenever I have that tripod kind of pyramid structure, then I know I can manipulate that structure and I can collapse it and break it down. So the first one that I wanna look at here is I'm gonna do a valley drop. And a valley drop um, is gonna be where I, I need for most of these to get him leaning back into me. If I can get him leaning back into me, that's gonna help me um, to be able to like take his energy and then collapse underneath the weight of it. So I push him forward a little bit and then he leans back into me. I step this foot here on the outside over this way beside this foot. I want this back leg to come up and slide until it kicks the back of his ankle on this side over here, this way. Once we do that and I fall beside him and behind him, then I'm gonna move into a strong side control kind of position like this, and then I can look to take his back or at least you know get a, a stronger kind of position on him like that for submissions. Once we're in this position here, I have my, my ear to the middle of his back like this. I'm gonna keep my arms wrapped around. I've got an S grip here. I push him, very important to push him forward so he leans the weight back into me so he does some of the work for me. I take my foot, I step up beside his one foot. My other foot comes over and either trips behind or kicks the back of the heel right here. And I turn the corner and I have my good top position. One that's really good that doesn't require quite as much commitment to me because the one thing about the valley drop whenever I do it is I have to fall with him. So it's a sacrifice throw. And inherently sacrifice throws, the, the reason they're called them sacrifice throws is because it's high risk, high reward. If I make the takedown, great. I've gotten him to the ground, I'm on top of him. But I am taking myself down with it. If it's a context where I would rather try to take him down and maybe remain standing or uh, not commit quite as much to the connection then this is a good one here. So I'm still starting in the same kind of position. I still have my hands in this S grip configuration. I'm still pushing forward. All the things are still the same as the uh, valley drop, but I'm gonna take the forearm here and I'm gonna cut this way back into me and it's gonna go through his hip flexor. Whenever that happens, I remove this foot, step it back to get it out of the way. So it looks like this and I put it down. So now I may not even have to go all the way down with him. I can stop here like this if this is a striking situation, or if I went and I could fall to the ground with him. So one more time, the way that looks is I get here, I've established my rear connection here, I push him forward, get him leaning back into me like this, I cut this uh, elbow back toward me, here, fold that leg, and then either I follow up and, and control him on the way down, or I let him fall a little independently of me so I can establish my knee on belly, or disengage the situation if that's the appropriate measure. Another one that's really good, and this lands me in a position where I could potentially be on his back as soon as we get to the ground, uh, it's generally referred to as a broomstick takedown. The broomstick takedown looks kind of like this. I'm here on his back. I might probably be gable grip for this one a little bit closer to him. And my leg here is gonna step around in front. And I'm gonna hook and kind of corkscrew through. So I'm coming around his leg here and then hooking behind his leg, behind his knee on this side over here. Now, for this, I'm gonna to start to fall and sit down to my butt on that side, on the outside to the leg. And I'm, as I do that here, I'm gonna reach up, hook his shoulder like this. If I can, from here, I'll also bring this one around and hook like this, like a half Nelson. So I'm extending my leg out, I'm pulling back on his shoulder so that when we fall, we wind up in this position here. Something that's good about this, rather than getting my second hook, that's possible, or I could just cross my two feet like this here, and then I can come back and start to look for uh, the rear naked choke off of this. And one more time on this broomstick takedown, I'm here on his back like this. I, uh, I'm kind of running him forward. Maybe this is a good one because he's not necessarily like leaning the weight back into me, making it possible to do one of those either valley drop or hip crackdown. I step here, wedge all the way through like this, I pull up 
and then get this kind of half Nelson. I extend my leg here, pull back on the shoulder, and then it lands us in this takedown position like this. And now either I get my second hook or cross here between the feet and then shoot through and I've got my choke. So on this one here, whenever I get to his back, this is another good one that it looks similar to like a Tai Toshi, except it's backwards and it has elements of a, of a valley drop. We're just gonna call it like a reverse valley drop. Uh, Alex just came up with that about 30 seconds ago. So we're gonna talk about this here and I get here on his back like this. So whenever I go here, I'm driving, again, uh, one of the common themes in this position is I'm driving forward, making him like put the brakes on and lean up against me. When I feel that start to happen, what I'm gonna look to do is I'm gonna bring this foot across, I'm gonna turn my hips to face away from him and I'm gonna drop to this knee on this side. So we get here like this, I drive forward here, and then I drop this way. The really good thing about this one here is it lands me in a really good top dominant position, and then I'm, I'm set up to either establish my mount or get around to side control or take his back. So one more time on this one is, we've got this one, I drive him forward, I feel him put the brakes on like that, and so I'm gonna step this leg through the middle here like this, and then drop to my knee here. And it really kind of spirals him down pretty quickly. It's really hard for him to resist if he's giving me any energy back at all. Really kind of sneaky to the guy. And it, it always reminds me a little bit of uh, in pro wrestling, whenever they like kind of uh, scoop in behind the guy and roll him up into a pinning position. Um, the thing, that's one of the things I like about it because pro wrestling. But this is also a really cool and really functional one because what I'm gonna to look to do here, I'm gonna kick my leg through like this, the one that's closest to him that we mentioned before, similar to the previous one where we did that kind of reverse valley drop. But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna take this hand, the one's going around his waist, and it's gonna go between his legs. I'm gonna pull back on his hip on this side. This one is gonna cup through on his hip on the other side. And then I'm gonna sit down and pull him across me this way. So we come up in this kind of position. Obviously, I don't want to stay here too long and you know maybe risk getting myself into a triangle or omoplata or something else. But I'll show you a good follow up after uh, on this next one here. So I get here, I push, I drive through like we mentioned before. I sit the leg through, I pull him across, and what I like to do with it is bring my leg around this way, so that now I've essentially passed his legs and I've gotten on top. Right, so that spiral where I kick the leg through, it follows the direction that he's already falling and it pushes his legs out of the way and gets me to here. This one, I'm not sure if I would be maybe an honorable mention because it's not, it is a takedown, but it's not a takedown more than anything. It's a good way for me to get into a leg entry. So if you're a leg locker and you like to attack for uh, heel hooks and stuff like that, this is a really good one if you manage to get to the back. So what we're gonna look to do from here is, I'm like this, I'm gonna push, drive him forward. And then uh, from here, I wanna step my back leg. So again, that tripod position, my, my posted leg back here, just steps up. This leg here is gonna kick through the middle. And then I sit, bring my feet here to his far side hip. And then as we come up here now, uh, I have I push his hip to the floor like this, and I already have immediate kind of leg exposure. I can come back already and start to look for the heel hook or attack the legs like this. So we're in this 50-50 position, but it's in a pretty good uh, angle for me. And I set the position so I have the head start on attacking before he kind of has the ability to catch up and start attacking me back. So one more time on this entry here, I've got pressed in here like this. Again, common theme is I drive him forward, again, put the brakes on. I step one, sit back through, stack the hip. And then I come up in this leg lock or this 50 50 kind of position here, like this. And then I look to go back for the heel or attack the legs in some other kind of fashion. So I hope you like these guys. These are some of my favorite ones. Again, this is not a comprehensive list. I know I left a lot of them out, or a lot of them that you might really like. I'm not talking about big pickups and slams and suplexes and all that. Those are all fantastic. These are just some that fit me really well and that I've had success with over the years. So if you find yourself lucky enough to get into that rear pinch position, these are some good options to get you to some good Tom and dominant positions off of the takedown. So anyway, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, share, notifications, all that stuff. Thank you, Alex, I appreciate you. Keep watching Night Jiu-Jitsu.